today in Journey to the Stone, I take you into the world of chatoyancy, asterism. These are big words for people who are new to the gemstone world, but they're actually very, very simple to understand. They are a rare occurrence that Mother Nature puts into some of the most important gemstones in the world. They are very difficult to find in good quality, and they are very uncommon. Let's take the ruby, for example. So Magok ruby currently holds the world record for the highest price of any colored stone in the world, over a million a carat with emerald coming in four times less at 250 a carat cashmere sapphires at 250,000 a carat even d flawless diamonds tap out at around 250 to 300,000 a carat except for like pink diamonds and blue diamonds which go above the 1 million a carat but the king of all color gemstones is the ruby very rarely if you're looking only at the best quality you will find a clean crystallized magok ruby that has the presence of a perfect six ray star now as a cutter you have to know how to cut it to bring out that star but it is a natural occurring phenomenon within the crystal structure called asterism this is created by rutel needles running through the crystal and it's the reflection of light off of these rutel needles that are in the crystal of this particular ruby dispersing out asterism which creates that perfect six ray phenomenon now there are stars that are missing a leg and there's only five rays or four rays that's of lower grade and there's a lot of stars in the world that are completely sleepy or opaque that is a whole nother thing what i am talking about is the rarest star rubies in the world and they can go for high five digits per carat the colors there they glow they're vibrant but they have a perfect six ray star that is by far the most in demand, you know, star variety of ruby in the world. Now, you also get the finest quality stars, I would say, coming in a secondary after the Magok mine. Very, very close is the Luke Yen deposit because the same geological structure, you've got that marble host rock, you've got that same color. To be honest with you, a lot of labs, actually primarily most labs, certify Luke Yen Vietnam material as Magok Burma. They look identical. It's very easy to confuse them, especially if the clarities are good. But the asterism is the same. The six ray will blow your head off. It is amazing and it glows. It's not Nothing more cool than looking at a star, you know, moving back and forth. And they move naturally, right? They move, and then the crystal of the stone, you can see the glow of the pigeon blood red within the crystal structure, right? Extremely beautiful and very, very uncommon especially in the finer grades i'm always looking for this material in history i have given cap florence six stones out of my personal collection and they sold immediately also very difficult to find and very uncommon is the star sapphire from burma if you're looking for a star sapphire from burma it is very uncommon to find it clean they're always sleepy. They're always a little bit more included. They're never perfectly crystallized. I would actually rank the ruby as a better buy coming out of the Burmese star. I just can't seem to find it clean. I buy hundreds and hundreds of kilos of rough and I pull out anything that has the star or that phenomenon. Just can't get it clean. So really, I end up selling it off. You know, I do cut them. I'll end up selling them off into the market. You'll see very few Burmese star sapphires go onto Cap Florence because they don't get the top level of crystallization that is demanded by her royalty, Miss Florence, who demands only, only, only the best, right? But in Sri Lanka, you do get some amazing blue star sapphires. I'll tell you my finest quality blue star sapphires by a long shot have come out of Sri Lanka, out of the rivers of Ratnapura, very, very sporadic. And you've got to be smart to be able to see the star within the crystal structure. They've got a lot of different types that appear. Once again, not common to be perfectly clean. I have collected about 10 stones throughout my career. I move hundreds and hundreds of kilos of Sri Lankan rough on a monthly basis. And I, I've only ever got like 10 stones that matter. You know, a five carat, perfectly clean top 
Cornflower or Royal Blue Ceylon Sapphire with a perfect six race star is a collectible. You're talking about one and a quarter million, five, half a million pieces of rough material that pass through my hands that you'll find actually a star period. But to get it perfectly clean with the perfect six race star is extremely rare and very, very uncommon. What's also cool about Sri Lanka is you do get also some pinks. You get some pink colors, which is really Really nice as well they don't get the pure red like magok or vietnam you know i'll be frank with you there are star rubies out there that come from sri lanka they're not as good as burma <laughs> period but then if you look at rubies that come from ceylon they're not as good as burma either right it's just the nature of the chromium concentration within the crystal structure of the material coming out of lukian vietnam right the vietnamese stone tract and the magok stone tract that are just superior in color but they do produce some amazing pinks you occasionally get Get some other colors you get whites you get the light color blues i'm only talking about the top spectrum of the collectability chain and the stuff that cap florence uses so royal blues you know cornflower blues perfect six ray star great clarity top of the line uncommon ceylon reigns supreme in the blue knockout boom red go burma vietnam ceylon go blue right those are the top of the line when you're talking about the star sapphires of the world there are other deposits in the world like in madagascar tanzania etc but those particular deposits don't have the crystallization they got amazing stars right there's a lot of vietnamese star rubies but they're not clean right but the ones that are clean are the money the money that's the stuff that is only going to go up in value because there is very limited amounts of it in the world 100 percent natural not treated and fine colors that's what you're looking for when you're looking at stars now let me take you to the world of crystal barrels right because we've got milk and honey crystal barrel comes out of sri lanka as well this particular material has you know like this yellow effect and this gold and this like golden honey effect on the other side and the eye is perfect this is called chatoyancy asterism is the star chatoyancy is what you'll find in crystal barrel now what is crystal barrel crystal barrel is a mineral that is also an alexandrite alexandrite the green variety of crystal barrel is it, the green variety of crystal barrel is alexandrite and there are also alexandrite cat size right and let me give you a breakdown because that is the king of the cat size the alexandrite cat size but don't think crystal barrel unlike its counterpart so if you take alexandrite it has a huge premium over yellow crystal barrel but in cat's eye, that changes a little bit yellow cat size demand huge prices huge prices there is such a collectible and demand market for yellow crystal barrel cat's eye and a perfect eye if the eye opens and closes as well right so what you do is you take the eye and you twist it to the right twist it to the left you must have a direct light source above so either you know some led light or whatever move it back and forth and the eye will actually open and close gemological phenomenon found in sri lanka these are known as the best cat's eye in the world the sri lankans reign supreme in the cat's eye on the other hand they also produce some amazing alexandrites but they've got nothing on the indian alexandrite cat's eye the indian alexandrite cat's eye is better color than the sri lankan alexandrite cat's eye the sri lankan alexandrite cat's eye has got the crystal but it doesn't have the color so if you look at a cat's eyes and i've had only one or two in my life that come out of russia because russia the mine's been closed for over a hundred years but the predominant amount of crystal barrel uh, Alexandrite cat size in the world today came out of the deposit of India, uh, you know, on the southeast, on the, you know, a, on the Indian continent. And that was the, that deposit basically produced a lot of faceted stones as well as the biggest array of cat size Alexandrite ever. That mine has been closed for over a decade now. So you can forget about this type of material and prices have soared exponentially. I mean, like they've gone into like five digits per carat for good ones and you just don't see them around. But if you can get an Alexandrite cat size from the Indian deposit, it has the 
best neon green with a 100% change to purple. The key is can you get it clean? The Ceylon you'll find clean, but you won't get it perfectly green. It'll be perfectly brown. It'll be brownish green, but it won't have the green, green, green. Brazilian material, you don't really see the cat's eyes coming out of Brazil. They do get some crystal barrels coming out of Brazil. We do get a lot of amazing Alexandrites coming out of Brazil, but we don't see the chatoyancy effect coming out of there. Now I'm going to take you over to the king of moonstones, right? Okay, so you got your moonstones. Okay, feldspar is the main mineral of moonstones. So we got feldspar, and you got some expensive varieties of feldspar, like sunstone coming out of Oregon can get up there, you know, to in the you know in four, four and a half, five digits per carat for very, very fine grades up in the Oregon sunstone deposit, especially if it's something spectacular, fifty carat clean, nice shiller, perfectly red. But they don't really have the moonstone effect. Effect. They have more of a Schiller effect. I'm not going to get into that in this episode. I'm talking about more, you know, the phenomena. You know, now let's talk about, you know, the Northern Lights, right? Let's talk Borealis. Let's talk the colors of the Northern Lights, what you see up at the North Pole, baby. That predominantly comes out of material that is found in Sri Lanka. Now, I'm a big buyer of this rough Ceylon Blue Moonstone, right? There's two types ceylon blue moonstone and ceylon rainbow moonstone right i am a buyer of all this rough material and i am probably one of the largest exporters of it all over the world when it comes to this material but most of it is used in medium grade jewelry right because it's never clean it's never clean you can sell like okay i'll get 100 kilos and maybe get less than one gram of crystallized material so it is so uncommon to see crystal it is just unheard of you can just basically forget about it because there's no way to get it that is it, it's harder for me to find that than it is to find you know a lot of important other varieties of gems it's just so rare it's so rare so i've given i've made it my life's job to cherry pick out so i'll buy let's like, say 400 kilos of rough and i'll go through it and i'll have my sword is pull it out and i'll end up with a one stone that can cut a two carat or a three carat they're just so rare and so uncommon and what you're looking for on the salon material the rainbow moonstones right or you know the blue moonstones is clarity if you can get any specification of clarity you're in the money this stuff can go for big money in japan Japan, Japanese love it. They love that sheen. It is rare. And if you can get a three carat, that's unheard of. A five carat, knock your head off. A 10 carat, forget it. There is less than 10 in the world that are perfectly clean. And that is what I collect and give to Cap Florence as well. So you will see the occasional blue moonstone, right? Or rainbow moonstone coming from Sri Lanka in the Cat collection. Please don't get used to that material. Once my collection subsides, we're done forever. I mean, I've been collecting this gem for 20 odd, 30 years, and I've given her all my collection. I'm almost done. So there's not a lot of those stones in the world. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this education on asterism, chatoyancy, and then the northern lights, Borealis Aurelis, right? The lights of them all, right? Of the moonstone. <laughs>